Hello there, and welcome to Critical Wade Theory, where we sometimes dive deep into the world of film, storytelling, and the incredible minds behind them, or something like that. I suppose if the movie's mediocre, then the minds probably would be, and the performances or whatever, but that's not the case with the movie I'm talking about today. Today we have an exciting episode, hopefully... I don't know, maybe it'll be boring for you, but uh, we're going to explore the critically acclaimed drama, May-December, directed by Todd Haynes, and I believe this came out in 2023, so it's a pretty new movie. It's definitely not that old, and uh, May-December brings together a stellar cast, including Julianne Moore, Natalie Portman, and Charles Melton. Now, I... I have not heard of Charles Melton, but I definitely know the other two because they're basically household name kind of actors. And this film isn't just a drama, it's sort of a deep exploration of identity, performance, and the profound impact of media on personal lives. So by performance, I mean both acting, you know, on, on a film, but also the way that people put on, put on a performance in their everyday lives, you know, I think, I think there are definitely some comments on both things happening in this movie. So I'm going to set the stage for you here just a little bit without revealing too much about the movie. The story revolves around a famous actress played by Natalie Portman, who travels to meet the woman she is set to portray in an upcoming film. The woman played by Julianne Moore was involved in a notorious tabloid scandal two decades prior due to an affair with a much younger man. And by younger man, it's actually a 13-year-old. And that's the character played as an adult by Charles Melton. So Julianne Moore reflected on her experience working with Natalie Portman by saying, I think, and this is a quote, of course, I think we take our work very seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. So on that note, this movie is definitely more of a drama than a comedy. So don't expect to go into it, you know, with a bunch of laughs happening. It's it's probably not going to have that impact on you. Although there are some elements of black comedy happening here and there. You're probably, you know, going to be more interested in the character-driven aspects of it. Not to say that comedy can ever be character-driven, but I think drama tends to bring that out a little bit better. And that's true even when it is a, a comedy. You know, most comedies are improved by having a few little dramatic moments here and there. But their dynamic on screen, you know, it's a... It's it, it's it's a good thing. I mean, what, what can I say? I sound like Martha's Martha Stewart now. I think that was her slogan, wasn't it? It's a good thing. Um, but anyway, the inspiration for the script, as shared by screenwriter Sammy Birch, stemmed from the character of Joe, the younger man, now grown up. Birch said, quote, The seed of it for me was always the character of Joe, this idea of being a 36-year-old man who was about to be an empty nester, who hadn't processed what happened to him when he was young or the media blitz that followed that was the first thing that really excited me about it and then also the chance to look more closely at 1990s tabloid culture and how it has pretty seamless seamlessly transitioned into this true crime frenzy that we're living in <clears throat> pardon me <laughs> um but anyway that's sort of an interesting point because I, I do think there has been some somewhat of a transition from, you know, 1990s tabloid culture, as she puts it, and a lot of the true crime stuff. And I, I think we sort of live live through those stories a little bit. What, what is it? Vicariously, I believe, is the word. I, I think there's even a Tool song that's about that, you know, like how we... Uh, enjoy the dark side of life, we're entertained by it, enthralled by it at times. Well, not everybody is, but let's face it, a lot of people are. You know, there's a there's a thin line between, 
you know, being entertained by something and, uh, you know, just being informed. That's one of the, one of the crazy things about the human experience. You're sort of walking a tightrope there. Like, are, are you getting, are you getting jollies from this or, you know, uh, are, are you, are you sort of doing a necessary duty by finding the truth about like the darker side of life? And, uh, you know, it, it can be an uncomfortable question at times. And that's why it, this movie itself deals with some uncomfortable questions because that's really what makes it an interesting movie. Now, it, is it like a masterpiece of a movie? I don't know if I would even say that, you know. I don't know how much rewatch value it'll have. I'd, I'm not sure if I'll visit this one further down the road. But it, it's it's a good movie. And, uh... I think there's I think there's a unique uh, perspective in this movie, and uh, there's you know quite a bit that might be able to be delved into in a rewatch. So I don't want to make it seem like oh it's necessarily a one and done sort of thing, but you know it's 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 just not necessarily something that's gonna grab everyone. And uh, Natalie Portman's character delves into the woman's past, you know, the, uh, the other, char the other uh, character in the movie. And the lines between reality and, and her eventual performance end up blurring because she becomes more in involved with the characters and, you know, leads to unexpected and intense interactions, let's just say. And the film masterfully explores the complex interplay between personal identity and public persona and th there's really an interesting uh, moment in the movie where Natalie Portman's character talks about well she's asked about what it's like to do sex scenes in a movie and she notes that at, at first it's you know like it starts off being a professional thing but after a while you're doing take after take and then you start to wonder well is this just for the movie anymore? Or uh, is there something more to it, you know? Like, I suppose you, I suppose in real life, like, if you are doing that, you're going to be asking that question, like, what, what's driving me to actually be here <laughs> doing this thing on the screen that involves simulated sex? Well, I guess sometimes there are real sex scenes in movies where it's not simulated, and I'm not just talking about straight up porn, but you know, like actual, <laughs> actual sex scenes. I mean, you can you can learn about that. It's it's a weird phenomenon in movies that they actually sometimes do it, maybe for the sake of authenticity or something like that. But this movie, it, it kind of, it kind of looks at the way that fact and fiction can be blurred. And if you've ever known somebody who's been sort of involved in a news story, I, I suppose that that could also make this movie more relatable to you. Or maybe you were part of a news story at some point, even if it's just a local news story. Well, you might be able to understand the way that the media environment will change your life. And it's probably not always in a positive way, right? So, um... Yeah, May December is noted for its deep character studies and the standout performances of its leading actors. The film premiered at the 2023 Cannes Film Festival, where it received critical acclaim for its direction, screenplay, and acting. Todd Haynes' direction, combined with the gripping screenplay and powerful performances, makes May December a pretty interesting watch, if, if you really want to seek it out, I, I, I would recommend it for you as a thing to try. And then, of course, if you're not so crazy about it, well, oh well, you know, we we don't like everything that we see, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a decent reminder of how past events and media scrutiny shape and sometimes distort our identities, and they might create some self-doubt. Uh, in this story, it's like 
the 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 uh, the character played by um, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> Julianne Moore. There we go. I forgot her actual name. That's how bad I am with names. But anyway, the the character played by Julianne Moore. She uh, she and her uh, husband were originally pretty happy with the relationship, but the the phenomenon of revisiting the scandal starts to uh, ma make them question things a little bit more. You know, it starts to uh, sort of fray away at their relationship a little bit. Um, well, I think I've said about enough for this movie, so. That's basically it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed my, I don't know if it was a deep dive, but examination of May-December. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to add it to your watch list. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep watching amazing films or mediocre ones that are tolerable. All right, so uh, you can subscribe and follow me on social media if you want. And uh, maybe you'll find some insightful episodes of this podcast. It's not always about movies or TV shows. Sometimes I, you know, talk about philosophy or politics or any number of things. So, all right, that's about it. Have a good one.